It's time for the Wally Mathot Show. Now, here are your hosts, Brent Wallace and Mark Mathot. Welcome to the Wally Mathot Show, everybody. I'm Brent Wallace. He's 13-year NHL veteran, Mark Mathot. Um, by the way, today's show brought to you by SportsInteraction.com. Go to SportsInteraction.com slash Wally Mathot for the most competitive live daily odds. And you can just pick if you're going to think the Edmonton Oilers are going to beat the Calgary Flames a little bit later in that series. I'm going to ask Meth all about that. Um, Meth, oh, by the way, you uh, are known to be a very lucky individual. Missed basically this entire <laughs> storm that just ripped through Ottawa while Craig it's is true. still trying to get a shower in. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about like, so I was gone for the world championships. I only go over there to do some of the round robin stuff as an analyst and Dave Reed comes in for the quarterfinals and the semis and all, et cetera. So, uh, but yeah, I, so I was gone from Tuesday last week to, uh, Tuesday of this week. And, uh, so I missed the entire storm. Luckily we didn't get hit too hard here at our house, but Craig only just got power prior to this interview. So for a lot of people, we are thinking of you. I've got a lot of close friends that are still without power. Uh, Brutal. Stitz. Yeah. I live in Stittsville and it was like, I missed it by a, basically a development and it went through some of my uh, friends homes. It's wild. The devastation was crazy. And I know it, it goes from, Oh geez, Peterborough to Clarence Rockland. I know this is a huge storm. So it, it affected a lot of people. uh, They said, Bigger yeah. than the ice storm that went through nine. I know. Like, and, and, and people, when I was in Toronto, there was really no coverage of it, which I thought was odd, you know, and, and then I finally came back and I'm starting to read about it. And there was an article I mentioned to you and borrow about how people yeah. were unaware of what was going on inside of Ottawa. Like they, they didn't, I don't think people truly understood the extent of the damage that was going on here. Like, so like, we don't even, a lot of the lights out here in Manitick are still out because they can't afford to send the hydro like the hydro have more important shit to do, right? Like getting people back up and running at their homes, which I understand. So like it'll been almost a whole week by the time it's all back. I would have thought the mayor of Manitic would have more pull, but I guess not. (laughs) No, no. I'm, and I am not complaining because (laughs) I have power and I'm lucky and I won't go beyond that. I'll, I'll handle traffic for a little bit, despite perhaps, you know, getting a headache in that traffic. I'll deal with it until everyone gets their power back. And then everybody, including my local MP is going to hear from me. Okay. (laughs) By the way, nobody can figure out (laughs) streetlights. If it's more than a four way stop, right? If there's a left turning lane, everybody is a mess trying to figure out which way to go in Manitick. And this was coming back from Toronto. I had to wait at this small, stupid little intersection for almost 30 minutes because 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 the heavy traffic is having to stop at every you know every vehicle's yes. got to stop and meanwhile you've got a very constant stream of the occasional vehicle yeah. coming the other direction so instead of having you know 20 cars at a time going through the busy side it was just one 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 so i mean that, i i did kind of lose my mind a little bit and i had been up <laughs> since 3 a.m when i was yeah. coming back after working in toronto so i was very uh, very moody you yeah you handle that stuff well that intersection by the way very is well. terrible that's a it's yes. There's nothing you can do about yeah. it. But what a bottle. No. Um, by yeah. the way, today's guest is our good friend and former Ottawa Senator Mark Borvietsky brought to you by the cool, refreshing taste of whitewater beer. Try the new tasty kiwi, lime, sour, funky, fresh flavor, uh, or try the new North South, the latest creation. It is smooth and great on summer nights. And especially if you're just now sitting around mm. and cleaning up all the debris that's out there. Uh, aren't sure about my assessment. Go to the website, shop whitewater.ca. Uh, mix and match your order or try the new flavors. You can get them also at the LCBO, but use the wham dash funky fresh coupon at shopwhitewater.ca and save 15%. Uh, go to sh- shopwhitewater.ca whitewater brewed by friends for friends. Um, so while you were there uh, in Toronto with the world championships, which by the way, Drake Batherson uh, had a great game the other day with four assists. Yeah, he did. Uh, you, I, I'm going to point this out as many times as I can now because it's not very often I'm right and you're wrong. But I picked the Tampa Bay Lightning. I over know the Florida Panthers. Now I feel a little wrong that I didn't pick the sweep, uh, but you were adamant and Mr. Bobby Ryan that Florida was going to win this series. Well, okay, you're right. Uh, I have to give you that one, Wally. You got me there. I went perfect in the first round and I'm getting bent over in the second. So, yeah. you know, right now, I mean, with that series, it's to me, it's well, everyone's contributing, but Kucherov decided he was going to start playing. So that, that threw me off. And then Vasilevsky is even better in this series than he wasn't, or he was even better in the second round than he was in the first against Toronto. So good for you. You got me there and I'm, I'm getting hurt in a couple series here. It wasn't just that one. 
I so now looking back though, the sweep is a surprise, but I'm going to say no kidding. President's trophy teams always carry this burden going into the yeah. playoffs. And we yeah. see it all the I time. Know. And I know there's been a few like Toronto. Well, even uh, Tampa had that great 62 win season and then got swept yep. by Columbus, right? Like you do yep. see it. And I saw it with Ottawa when they did it. Um, there's such a pressure for them to go through the regular season. And then typically you haven't faced any adversity in the regular season. So when it starts to show yeah. up, you don't have to handle it necessary. That was a big thing for me with Florida. I think just couldn't handle the pressure that they were now facing with Tampa. Right. Well, my, my biggest, my biggest issue. And I mean, that's the obvious one is how did they get swept? Like, how do you, how do you give up four games that way? And you know, it's like, you're the best team in the NHL. I had them potentially winning the Stanley cup. I knew Tampa was going to give them fits. We all knew that we knew when Toronto drew Tampa, you're thinking, okay, this couldn't happen to a better team because Tampa's dangerous, right? If they yeah. get healthy and they figure it out, they, they can win games. So that really threw me off. And um, right now, this, I, I thought there was another. What was the other series that I was well, screwed they, up on here? Oh, well, did you have the Hurricanes or you picked the Hurricanes? I, and that's a two, I took two Carolina. Series. I took Carolina. Oh, yeah. I took Calgary as well. That was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll get to Calgary in a sec. Yeah. yeah. That one's that one's certainly interesting. The other. Um, Point about Tampa, no Braden point, and they still swept them. Like you're missing your number one center and you still yeah. swept. Them. But that's because they've got Nick Paul, and Nick Paul does it all. <laughs> it's, uh, it's true. But that's but that was a good point, right? Like no Braden point going into the second round. And Kucherov wasn't looking great. I mean, he looks no. fantastic in that game, last game, but against uh Toronto, he was really good in his last game. But to me, I'm watching that and I'm thinking, okay, you're Braden Point, arguably one of your better players, probably the best one at the time. He's hurt. There's no chance. Like, there's no chance they're going to beat the Panthers. At the, and they're so deep. But they they figured it out. Anyway, I don't want to hammer this too far or too long, but uh, okay, here's congratulations the last, to last Tampa. Last point is after that first game against Toronto where it looked like Tampa wanted no business of being on the ice, are you yeah. now as surprised as everybody else that they just swept the President's Trophy winning Florida Panthers in round two? After watching yeah, I mean, game one, first, <laughs> it was terrible. yeah. I mean, well, well, yeah. It was it was brutal, and that's what I'm saying. And then you know, a couple player. It just takes. I mean, I think for me, and, and I know you will agree with me here, Wally. It's just they've they've got winning pedigree, right? Like they, yeah. they've got the experience. They don't they don't they don't rattle easy. I mean, we saw. I think Joe Thorne had a quote. He's like, I don't know what just happened. He's like, I have no idea what just <laughs> happened. And I'm agreeing. It's like I think yeah. everyone's just shocked. So I mean, here they are, and they're. They're dominating again. They dominated again, rather, and they're now they're resting and they're getting healthier. And a team like that, take like a team like that, getting a sweep and then having a little bit of a lull until that third round. That will only benefit them. It's not going to hurt them because they they they, they just need rest. This is an, they're in Florida now. They're on the beach. They're relaxing. Yeah. They're getting healthy again. They're gonna be they're gonna be primed for that third round. I almost forgot to bring this up. Uh, have you ever known teammates? to go to perhaps a gentleman's club the night before a playoff game. No. Why? Where's that coming from? Who's, Do you not who's, know this story? Just recently. No, this, Oh, the Florida, tell me Panther, the Florida Panthers. It was reported the night before the last game four all went out to a strip or some visited oh. a Tampa strip club. So, okay. And did you say the Panthers did or the Tampa Bay lightning did? No, the Panthers did. Oh, Really? Okay. <laughs> yes. Now I'm curious, like how many, okay. Now were these some of the black aces that aren't even dressed that went and that sort of represented the group? Like there's that does, that story doesn't check out to me. I'm sorry. I just can't imagine. I don't know. I don't want to shit all over the story. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there might be some truth to it, but to suggest that half the Florida Panthers went there the night before of, of an elimination game, come on there. So all I can tell you, uh, cause I, I don't have the story in front of me is yeah. The people that reported it was a, I believe a Tampa radio station. And uh, okay. they can, they confirmed their sources by basically saying, I know the people that work at the strip club very, very well. Um, so yeah, they see, but I don't know names of players that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, all right. So you could well, be right. I the mean, black aces. That's a very valid point. I, uh, yeah. Like is all it takes. And I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. It, it only takes a couple players to literally yeah. paint the big picture for the whole team. Right. And, and I thought in my experience, that was conversations we would have in the I locker guess. room during the playoffs or at least, yeah. Leading up, right. Like you tell the young guys, listen, 
nobody F around here because, you know, we don't need any team distractions and we certainly don't want media using any of that as an excuse for your poor play. If by chance you don't play well. Right. So typically yeah. players are in tune with that, you know, and that yeah. was my point is going to be that morning of game four was answering questions about, did you go out or not? And Andrew Brunette was being asked questions about his team. Yeah, going like that's out. the last thing Andrew Brunette wants to deal with, exactly. right? Like he's about to yeah. win the Jack Adams or he's in the conversation yep. and now he's dealing with that. Like, come on. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. Um, by the way, the Tampa Bay lightning on the move. Uh, and so that would lead us to our Boyd moving sponsorship, huh? Mm. Like, how, yeah. Um, Very nice. Want better pay, more respect, more job security. It's time to move to Boyd moving. If you're an experienced mover, truck driver, or just a hardworking go-getter who wants rewarding work, then it's time to turn your job into a career. Apply today. Boydcareers.ca. Boyd moving. We keep Ottawa moving. I, and they're probably pretty busy of late just trying to help people out uh, as well as right now. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so you brought up, uh, do we need to talk about the, the Ranger series, which is just a home and home? Like what is going on? Carolina cannot win on the road. There's no chance to me that they stand a chance if they even make it to round three, if you can't win I mean, from your own building. Well, well, yeah, I, MSG is a tough building to play in. We all know that. I mean, mind you, we, we had some success there, so it's not a fair comparison, I guess. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I think players that play for New York, I mean, they just get, a, it's like, well, it's like anything, but particularly those, those passionate fan bases, like the Montreal Canadians, Toronto, New York, those big markets, yeah. like when you're playing for that team and you're in your own building and those fans are behind you, it just gives you that juice, right? Like you, you're, yeah. you have such an advantage over your opponent right there. And it can affect officiating to a degree too, when you've got them loud and, and screaming off a potential penalty or whatever it may be. So um, but, but the series being tied right now is not a surprise to me. Like to me, when I'm looking at that series, it was pretty even like I had Carolina winning it, yeah. but I'm not surprised that New York's having their way with them at home at the very least. So, I mean, I, I don't have much else to add there other than yeah. I like what Mika's doing. Kreider still playing out of his mind. I don't understand where this is coming from. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be, a, at least we have a competitive series, right? I mean, absolutely th that Tampa yeah. Florida one was such a letdown. Everyone was looking forward to it like that. I called it a bloodbath leading into it. I was, I was gravely mistaken on that. So for me, my eyes are on the battle of Alberta right now, Wally. I'm not even paying attention to Calgary or Carolina. They're boring. So uh, it, no question. Uh, this now has this series. We're going to talk about Calgary Edmonton, uh, yeah. which is now a three, one Edmonton lead. Is this <laughs> series living up to what you thought it was? It is, it is, except it is as far as the drama goes and the, you know, the FUs in between whistles. I love that stuff. Like to me, yeah. I, I don't like dirty hits. I don't like dirty plays, but I like the rough stuff because it just builds up a series, right? Like right. you don't want to see two teams just kind of make, go, go through the motions and maybe one team wins, but there's not a lot of passion in the series. This has that. Um, I just wish it was more balanced, right? Like I, I, I wished Calgary had a little bit more pushback. Uh, especially offensively, but that's all McDavid. I mean, McDavid, Evander Kane leading the NHL in goals. Yeah. Now he's playing with McDavid, but give Kane credit. I mean, he's getting he's still there. Gotta he's, score them. He's yeah, you still got to score them. You still got to get to the right spots and make space for yourself. And Calgary has a good team. So it's a great team. So between those two and dry Seidel, obviously, I mean, they're just, they're playing excellent hockey right now. They're getting good goaltending. Mike Smith, despite the blunder, um, the other night is, it's been fantastic. So he's lived up to what he's needed to do. Just give them an off, give your team a chance to win. And he's doing that. So I, I have, I have no qualms with that series. I'm enjoying it right now. Despite the late starts wall, you know, I'm very OCD with my bedtime. Um, I am enjoying those games. The, um, the play with Lucic, uh, running into Mike Smith. If you are yeah. an Edmonton oiler, does that have any <laughs> impact mentally in you, for you because they hey. i don't believe the hits like for me that's not a dirty hit i i understand that he got what he got but he didn't go in there to try and run him into the boards mike smith falls awkwardly because he turns that's just me i could be wrong yeah i mean to me it's more like what are you going to do about it though right like if you're a exactly. player and and a, and a player like lucic comes in and does what he does yeah you have to try to step up like if it was me i would do something but I would also realize that I was probably like, I'm tangled up all of a sudden with this like big ape, like this big, strong yeah. guy. It's not Johnny. He would no, like he'll probably hurt me, but out of fear of being scrutinized, 
I would probably do something. It wouldn't even be with the right, what's the word I'm looking for? It wouldn't be the right intention. It would be more just out of avoiding embarrassment. And I think that's where I would be on that play specifically. But I mean, you look at the effect that some of these guys have, you know, Lucic and, and, and players of that nature. I don't want to compare Lucic to Reeves in New York, but, yeah. but when you've got big, tough guys playing in heavy rounds like that against the same team every other night, they're effective. You're seeing it. Look at the response New York had when they threw Reeves back in and they started playing them. I mean, it makes everybody in your lineup that much more comfortable. We went through it when Chris Neal joined us yeah. against Tanner Glass in that New York series, right? Like in 2017, where... Tanner Glass was having his way with us. We didn't have a response. All of a sudden, you throw in your pit bull, and everything cools down. All your players like Kyle Turris, Mark Stone, all these other guys start elevating their play because they're not playing. And, and they were never scared, but it has an effect throughout the lineup. So that, that's really the only thing I can add there is that if a player like Lucic comes in, that's a guy that can also play and be effective, and he's a scary dude to play against. I mean, he's huge. He's very strong. They're just, that's, that's, it's as simple as that. Okay. So I, I believe we can confirm, or at least we think the Calgary flames are a very good defensive hockey team. Correct. We can, I okay. agree with you. Yeah. So, and I understand that Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl are league MVPs that's confirmed, but can you not yeah. do a better job of containing them <laughs> as a group? I'll, so I need to, like you tell I need to me as here. a defenseman in the national hockey league. I need to remind everybody that Eric Carlson and myself never allowed McDavid a point in the four games we played against him. So I do have that in my back pocket. So don't question my credibility because that's how good I was. I was that good. You know, I'm, I'm kidding right now. Anyway, uh, no, for me, it's simple. When you're playing against a guy like Connor McDavid, you can only try to contain him so much, right? He's going to have his way. He's going to get his opportunities. So I would much rather give Connor McDavid a shot through me, then allow him to get around me or make a fool out of me and posterize me on television. So I think you have to forfeit the idea that you're going to have good gap and that you're going to contain him and that you're going to be, have, you're going to allow someone to shadow him all game. That just doesn't work. Cause he's, he's too good. He's too fast. He doesn't even have to look down at his stick Wally, right? Like when he's handling the puck. Yeah. So, you know, the back pressure for me, it's not just your defense, it's your forwards. They need to be so meticulous with their back pressure and their awareness of where he is on the ice. You always need to have a guy over top of him in the neutral zone and in the offensive zone. In the D zone, it's a little more difficult. You have to rely more on your defense and your goaltending to stop him. But, I mean, guy like Zadorov or Good Branson, it's tough for them because they don't necessarily have the best footwork. They're, I, I'm a huge fan of both of them in the playoffs. I do yeah. agree that they have a place there, but – you need some guys that can skate and keep up with them. And it's hard to find them. Tanov did a good job against him at times, but eventually if you're going to take some penalties, Connor's going to, going to score some goals. Like, what so, do you think? Do you think you can defend it? Like, 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 well, I, don't, so, I don't know. No, like, the only reason I ask you is because you guys played against Malkin and Crosby, which kind yeah. of uh, not e- the easier though. Speed. Yeah. Not the same. Yeah. They're speed. easier to defend against. They're harder right. to play against it from a standpoint of they may end up with two goals and a couple of assists on the stat sheet at the end of the game, but you have no idea when it happened because right. you know, they're not physically making you look bad. It's just good passes, good setup plays. So it's a, it's a different animal. Yeah. And that's why I was curious of when it comes to Crosby and, and Malkin, like you guys did a pretty good job of shutting them down uh, yeah. a couple of times. And I, that's yeah. why I was curious of how mentally you go into that because well, you just, I don't, it's, I, it's, I, well, it, in the room, Wally, like, so yeah. when I'm standing in the dressing room and I know that it's probably pager and so it would have been Peugeot, who else would have been, who else would have been on Zach a shutdown Smith? line up front? Smitty, maybe, uh, Chris Kelly, I remember all of them. Yeah. I don't know no, who's around Kels. with you. But there was, there was, anyway, if I'm sitting in the dressing room and I'm there and we're in Pittsburgh or we're in New York, where if you're playing against a, a legitimate top line threat. Yeah. The first thing I'm saying is I'm reminding those guys every intermission before the game. It's like, guys, make sure we have good over the top pressure. Make sure you're coming back. Good back pressure. Cause if they have good back pressure, Sid can't do his little turn up plays when he enters the offensive zone and then finds all the late players and you know, he's going to find them. So yeah. that was the point that I always hammered it on was the offense. I would tell my forwards, 
make sure you're coming back and have a good third man high. And that was really all you can do. And then otherwise you're relying on you and your partner just to make good defensive reads and plays and try to play in the offensive zone as much as you can. Luckily we had Carl and Eric was so good at that. So we would do the work in the D zone and then Eric would create fits for those guys in the O zone. Cause we'd have good sustained pressure and zone time. Right. So it would yeah. tire them out. Then they would change and then you would change. And that's usually how it would work. Uh, finally, last point on Edmonton, Calgary, and that's just Cody CC, uh, who yeah. got, who got a rough ride out of Ottawa. I, I don't think we, anybody will deny that. Then he goes and plays with Austin Matthews, basically in Toronto. Then it's Crosby Malkin and the, in the group in Pittsburgh. And now he's with McDavid and dry side on Edmonton. Good for, uh, but he's playing extreme. I think he's playing extremely well. And I think it's now he time is. he gets a little bit of uh, recognition for the fact that he's yeah. been playing uh, as well as he has. Yeah. Wally. I love that you said that. I, I think, and, and people forget, you know, and you know, he had his moments for sure in Ottawa. We all did, but he was paired with Dion and Dion and, and Cody's role was to defend and get, they were eating hard minutes. So, you know, Eric and I, like I was a little insulated because, you know, I wasn't always playing the big minutes because Eric, if we on any given night, if there were a lot of power plays, I'd be sitting on the bench a lot. So my minutes were hovering mostly around 18, 19 minutes. And Cody, Cody was playing like 23, 24, like 25, a ton of ice. Yeah. 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 So, so, you know, I think where Cody got a little flack was his, his lack of bite, maybe sometimes in the yep. D zone where he's not going to punish you. It's CC like Cecer is a great guy. He's such a nice kid and not a kid, but you know what I mean? Like just very, very calm demeanor. And sometimes that would come out in his play, but yep it wasn't necessarily a bad thing because he was eating up so many minutes. So he wasn't able to go out there and run around all the time. So my point is I'm, I'm so happy to see him do well. Cause he's such a good guy. I mean, really one of the best guys I've ever played with in the NHL. Like I can't remember a time he had a bad day. He was always in such a good mood. So nice to everybody. So good to see him excel and find a, find a niche there with the Oilers. And the one problem I always had with people that picked him apart was, and you maybe can appreciate this more is, he yeah. went through coach after coach after coach, but still played about 24, 25 minutes a night. It's true. Like if every coach who's in the National Hockey League that's coaching him wants him on the ice, then he's got to be able what does to that do tell something you? right. What and does that just ignore exactly. that? So Cody's game, Cody's game is very simple. It's not simple, but I, I know it. It's He's a very good skater. Yeah. Um, he's not super explosive. He's not super physical, but he's very smooth, and he's very reliable – uh, eating up those big minutes. He kills penalties. He gets in the shot lanes. He's can, he can make plays. He's good at passing the puck. He's crisp. That's where that's his bread and butter. He's not a punisher. He's not going to wow you offensively. He's just a really good two way defenseman. So those are the guys you need, man. They eat up a ton of minutes. So I'm yeah. glad you brought him up Wally. He, he deserves some props. Okay. Uh, we're coming up soon. We got the, uh, the Mark Borbietsky interview. Uh, it's always good to catch up with Boro. Um, by the way, looking to refresh the front yard or do a complete landscape makeover, <laughs> need some landscape stone aggregate. <laughs> I should get you to start reading these. That's what you I know. know what? It'd be funny if I had to read yeah. like that. Eh? I, next maybe episode, next show. We'll do, yes. Yeah. You're going to have to do uh, this one. Uh, how about maybe thinking of redoing the driveway? Bonisher excavating here to help with all your needs, competitive pricing uh, for your landscape work. Give them a call. 613-432-1120 or go to bonisherexcavating.com. BEI, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. We'll be right back with Mark Borvietsky after this. And then we're going to have a quick chat with Craig just to have a look and see what he looks like for a guy who hasn't showered in about 12 days. Uh, you're watching <laughs> The Wally Without Show. Uh, welcome into the Whitewater Chat, our good friend, one of the most universally liked gentlemen on the face of the earth, uh, and our good friend, Mark Borvietsky. Hi, sir. How are you? Are you oh, sure, uh, Wally? Yeah. I was just, yeah, your nose just grew a little bit. I was just very <laughs> I just did that as a shot at meth. It, that's the only reason I did that. <laughs> and that's fine. I'll, I'll gladly take that on. So it's all good. Uh, how's Nashville? Yeah, good. It's been great. Uh, Kind of a shorter end, the earlier end of the season than we, you know, hoped for or anticipated. But, um, you know, glass half full. It's been nice to have a few weeks with the family here just to kind of decompress. All right, you brought it up. So Daryl Sutter already warned us uh, that it was going to be eight days for any team to play Colorado in the first round. Uh, so how did you feel playing the Colorado Avalanche? Um, yeah, I, I mean, like you can tell based on the series, like they were. 
they were good. And by no means were we a bad team. You know, I don't think we were playing our best hockey going into playoffs. We kind of limped in a little bit. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, just trying to be as objective as I can. Uh, yep. We certainly weren't at our peak. So, but, uh, you know, they just have so many weapons. Like, like, like Makar on the back end. Like, to me, he's, Stupid. Like, he's like McDavid playing D, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously, you know, the obvious guns up front, you know, McKinnon, Kadri, Durant, and these guys, Landis Cog, like it's just a really good team. And, you know, even more so, I was impressed by how hard they work. Like the forwards were like reloading and like killing plays coming back. Like yeah. they weren't just all skilled running guns. So yeah, they're just a really good team. Yeah, they're they're relentless. It looks like just from watching on TV yeah. and the other night I was sitting in bed, Boro, not, not that we're trying to pump up your opponent's tires too much. I understand that it's awkward for you, but it felt like I was watching the game on one and a half speed. You know, when you speed up like yeah. voice notes on your phone, like everyone was just, everyone's flying. The games are so fast. So to me, it's like, you guys drew a tough hand there. And the, not that I know it's an excuse, but really tough situation for you guys. Very similar to Tampa, right? Like you're looking yeah. at Tampa with the Florida series. It's like, you're facing two time Stanley cup champion in that first round or whatever. It's like, Oh my God. So yeah, feel for, for sure. you there. That was yeah. one of those things. The first round matchup for us, you know, Calgary, it was that if we put them that series, is probably going out, going to seven and no one's coming out of that alive. You know, there's probably 10 injuries on each team or you go up against Colorado and you, yeah. you're playing an absolute powerhouse, you know? So <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, it was, it was a difficult situation. Like, like, like the, the central was just, you know, for lack of a better term, was just like a bloodbath this year. So yeah, um, definitely a tough, a tough division. Uh, Roman Yossi, obviously a finalist for the uh, Norris Trophy. I know he's your teammate, so ob- it, obviously it's slanted towards him. But how good was this season for a guy that had over 90 points, led the team in scoring, aside from the way he plays defensively? Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I was just so impressed by him every day. And <laughs> I, I'll preface it by saying, like, this, this guy works so hard in practice. Like, he does every rep 110 110- percent like he does not take days off he's in the gym all the time so he's just he really is like a complete package to me um and then i think when you when you watch him on the ice like his ability to make something out of nothing offensively is pretty remarkable like he's so elusive his edges are so good he can just like all these little escape maneuvers that you know d-men like me and math tried to do and look like idiots i mean he's like you know he just busts it like like it's crazy you know like you yeah. know, any broken play he can turn it into something Yep. Um, and he's just, it's like good players, you know, the puck just kind of follows them and finds them and he's one of those players. And, um, yeah, I mean, on top of it all, he's just a great guy. So I, I, I was just really thankful just to be able to see that kind of a year. Cause he broke a bunch of records and it was pretty special. Yeah. You mentioned this work ethic, uh, like when we're talking about McDavid, McKinnon, Crosby, like we heard about the bathrooms and we interviewed Drake and he talked about skating with the guys out in out East. Right. And yeah. talked about their work ethic in the middle of summertime. Like, I feel like I feel like that's the difference maker for a lot of these guys that are on that like next level. You're already playing at an elite level at the NHL. Now all of a sudden you've got these guys that separate themselves from the pack. So like, does he take days off Boro? Like, does he like take a lot of optionals or like, what's his, what's his schedule look like in the season? I'm curious. I mean, the guy plays like 30 minutes a night. So like towards the end of the year, he was taking optionals, but yeah, but I will say like, he doesn't just like come into the rink and put on his flip flops and watch TV and have, 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 a, have a coffee. Like, he has a very specific, you know, he trains with a guy that uh, Matthews and Kane use uh, there. And he has a very specific regimen routine that he does. And he does it every single day. It doesn't matter if he's running on three hours of sleep, nine hours of sleep, like he's in there doing it. And I think that's the kind of stuff that just builds him up and builds him up. And like when he is out there in practice, like I'm not, I'm not joking. Like every rep is full speed. You know, he's like walking guys in practice. Like sometimes it's you're just crazy. trying to get the motions because you got in at 3 a.m. the next or the night before, right? Yeah. But he's out there like just doing everything 100 miles an hour. So wow. it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about your season. You played 57 games, had 151 penalty minutes, which was three less <laughs> than you had. Oh, I love it. 70 games, 100. Like what was in what happened this year? Were you just cranky? Uh, Pissed I off. Don't know. <laughs> I, I mean you know first of all our team our team was tough like we had some games there it was like a slap shot movie you know like uh it was it was it was pretty fun to be a part of we got some bangers on the front end there and just a really good group of guys and that was kind of our identity and i think it served us pretty well but um you know i i'm asked to play a role here like i'm playing on the left side behind roman and matias at home like two two really really good left shot defense but you know my expectation is not to get offensive zone starts it's not to take five on five minutes from these guys. My expectation is to go out there and play a role. And if it's 11 minutes one night, if it's 17 minutes the other night, 
great, but I'm going to go out there and be physical. I'm going to fight. I'm going to hit. I'm going to block shots. I'm going to kill penalties. And um, I don't know. Things just start to rack up. So. <laughs> One of those penalty minutes was in Ottawa where you got a tripping call. Um, yeah, that was a bad call. <laughs> but that's not what I want. I want to ask you about that game because I watched it, the video. Uh, it was your first game back in Ottawa since you left. It was, um, you were as emotional as I've seen a player in a return yeah. because I know what this meant to you to play here. Can you take me through this game? <laughs> that was the worst I've ever felt in an NHL hockey game. Right? I, I'm sure, I, I don't know what it's been like for you. Bro, like I was back. dash three. When I went to Ottawa and played yeah. in that game, I, I couldn't play. It was like, yeah. it was too much, you know, like I emotional. Like, and we had this like military caffeine gum. I was just like chomping on this stuff. Like after my first shift, I was like, <laughs> I'm in one right now. My legs felt like they weren't attached to my body for the yeah. first period. Um, I don't know. It was just like, and meth can speak to this too. Like that wasn't just a place where I played. Like that's home, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, I wasn't joking when I was like, I knew I was in one when I, we were taking the bus at Richardson side road. I was like, Oh my God. Like, <laughs> You know, <laughs> is that not the is that not the worst feeling when you know it, like uh, mentally you're already in one and you're not yeah. even at the rink yet? Oh yeah. my god. I was emotional warm-ups. You know, there was uh, yeah. a little guy from the condors there, Christian, who had his love and he was like blowing me kisses and telling me that he loved me and stuff. And I was like, Oh my god, like I don't think I'm gonna really get through this game. So yeah, um, you know, it certainly wasn't my best performance, but I, I, I got through it without anything without anything too egregious. So I was like, that's just one to get it done and get it over with and move on. So. Yeah. It's hard. And it's hard for a defenseman too. I, and I guess it's probably yeah. an excuse, but you can't hide, right? Like you're that last line. So if you oh. do make some sort of mistake, and especially as you just said, if, if it is an egregious mistake, it could yeah. end up in the back of your net and everyone sees that. Right. Dude. Whereas up front, you can kind of coast around yeah. and hide yeah. and all for that. Sure. So no, there was I, a couple of times uh, for me, momentum is coming down on me. And I was like, I just do not have the foot speed for this <laughs> to be dealing with this. Like, Nobody has the foot speed yeah, to keep up with on that. On a kid. good it's... day, I don't have the foot speed to deal with it. On a day where yeah. I feel as crappy as I do, I was like, this is going to be rough. So, yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it's really special to get back. Like the support I got was pretty amazing. I was pretty thankful for that. But one of those yeah. ones where I'm like, you know, Danny Hynote is one of our coaches and he played for a long time. You're probably familiar with him. Uh, I've, he coached me. I had him. Yeah. I had him in uh, Columbus. Okay. Yeah. And like, he's just an unreal you. guy, like such a good resource for us because he played for so long and he like gave me a huge hug after the game. He's like, I don't know how you did that. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm so glad this is done. But it's, it's also when you get to the, like what people don't see, like the fans, it's also the people you're used to seeing the people that work around the arena, the trainers yeah. on the other yeah. team, the equipment guys, like, there's sure. so many familiar faces, right? And you're, and it's just yeah. a huge distraction. That was my issue, yeah. at least. A hundred percent. Like, just felt like you were talking to someone for every minute leading up to the game. And the next thing I knew, it's like, I got to get my warm-up. Exactly. Here, you know? So, yeah. yeah, it was definitely tough. Yeah. yeah. So, you know when the video is coming. It's always the first commercial break uh, in the first period. So, are you just trying to get to this point? Or, and then you see it playing. I, I guess, how long does it take you after to try and gather yourself? Yeah, like, you know it's coming, so there's a bit of that sort of, like, anticipatory anxiety, I think, you know? Um, mm. And then, like, I was just, like, TV timeouts, I like to get on the ice and just kind of, like, skate around and keep my legs loose. And one of the young guys told me, was like, oh, here it is, buddy. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, and then so I actually hung out with him and watched and I uh, did my best to stay as stoic as I could there and not get too emotional. So, um, I, you know what? I actually felt a little more settled in after that video. It's funny you mentioned that. Like, it's just like, hey, it's done. Now I'll just go play. And, you know, I think a couple of espresso shots in the caffeine gum probably helped too, kind of kicked me in overdrive <laughs> a little bit. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, it was tough. I'm not going to lie. Like that was, that was the most tired I've been after a game was the most tired I've been during a game. Yeah. You had eight hits. Was there anybody you tried to hit yeah. in particular? I, no, I mean, there's no, no, I, I felt, honestly, I felt very old out there because like a lot of these guys I like recognized like stomping around at D camp when I was working out in the summers, you know, I was like, yeah. Oh my God. And then I think after the second, like <laughs> Parker Kelly said something to Saros or goalie. And I was like, game on. Like, I was like, you're going to get hurt <laughs> if, if you keep doing this. Like, <laughs> and I've heard he's a great kid. Like my, one of my, one of my best friends is uh, Ben Sexton, who coaches in Belleville and just thinks the world of Parker. And yeah. So I knew he's a good kid, but I was like, listen, Paul, like if you do this, like it's not going to end well for you. So <laughs> no, there was nothing um, too great. But. Math, if I'm not mistaken, you said in warm up you couldn't handle the puck uh, in that game. I, I could be wrong, but I'm curious, like Boro, could you handle the puck in warm up? Was there nerves in warm up? Yeah. Honestly, like, yeah, same thing. Like, just 
I feel like I'm beating a puck square on the best of days uh, in that <laughs> warm up. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, like chopping onions out there, you know, trying to yeah, stick handles. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it was tough. You know, I think I was just kind of soaking it all in at that point. Like yeah. I saw my parents there and buddies and stuff. So um, I don't know. I kind of went by in a flash, but yeah. Again, I'm I'm thankful it's over because I was absolutely exhausted. Mm. You know what you needed? You needed someone like a Brady Kachuk to be your brother in the stands and take all the attention away. <laughs> Is the hype squad? <laughs> yeah, like like he's doing for Matthew. Uh, how yeah. much? So I, it's been a huge debate for whatever reason around Ottawa or even in the NHL circles about Brady Kachuk uh, supporting Matthew Kachuk and wearing a whether it is a Flames colored shirt or whatever. Does anybody really have a problem with this in the National Hockey League? <laughs> I don't care. I mean, like he's cheering on his brother. Like I, I, I just, I mean, I don't know if there's any deeper connection than that. You know, this is when hockey's all said and done, who's going to be there for you? It's your family and, and their family, their brothers, like ah, good point. more, more power to him. You know, like would I be up there slugging back? Coors? Probably not, but I mean, that was my <laughs> only <yeah>. small <laughs> criticism was like right in there drinking beers, but it's, <laughs> but it's great. Like, and that's not me like old man yelling at the cloud thing. I, like, yeah. I'm pretty relaxed with that. I usually yeah. I'm, I'm liberal when it comes to that kind of stuff. But like for me, I think I'd be more comfortable sitting in a box or something or somewhere yeah. away from the yeah. fan base, not wearing like a Calgary Flames T-shirt yeah. with two Bud Lights in my back pockets going up the <laughs> stairs. Right. So I mean, that was uh, all I said. hundred <laughs> percent. Like, I understand that as a point of contention. Like, I think yeah. knowing Brady, like he's just like exactly he's like a, good he's a beauty goofy kid, you know, he's happy yeah. go lucky. Like. It's just his personality. He's not trying to like do it to hurt anyone or piss anyone off. He's cheering no. on his brother and have, having a good time. And he's with his family. And, you know, the, I'm sure the atmosphere in Saddle Dome or whatever it's called now is pretty sweet. And it's hard not to get sucked into it a little bit. So. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was, I was talking to Jamie McLennan about that. And he was, he, he had a really good quote. He was like, when you draft one of the Kachucks, you're drafting the whole family. You know what I mean? And that's just the way it is. So, you know, they're all very involved and they're all very yeah, passionate and it's, it's, it's fun. It's a party, you know? So I'm with you yeah. on that. Yeah. I, I have no issues. With it. Yeah. Um, Matt, I was going to ask you at the beginning of the show and I held off because I want to ask you both uh, being a oh uh, very good defenseman. No, this, um, okay. We earlier this season had a debate over who you'd take Matthews or McDavid. Is there any question? So my question to you both, if you had to build an NHL playoff team to win you a Stanley Cup, I mean, why is on. this even a question? Be like, are you watching McDavid right now? There's but the argument the is he's the best player of all time. But so I, but is so my question is, is he the best player of all time, or are we just in our? I mean, we can see it now, and so we automatically gravitate I'll, towards. I'll let Borrow. I don't want. Yeah, we'll let our guest answer it first, and then I'll chime in. <laughs> oh yeah, you're passing the buck to me, right? <laughs> well, I, I I could go. I'll, okay, I'll make a really quick comment, and yeah. then you can build off it because yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot. I, I think for we're me, it's simple. Be aligned on this. Yeah, thing. like like I don't. I think it's disingenuous for him to compare a player like in the new salary cap era, for example, compared to a player like Gretzky or Lemieux yeah. or whatever. So because different players, different opponents, different equipment, uh, everything was different. But like Gretzky in his own right, absolutely dominated, right? Like greatest of all time type of situation. But I mean, I think Wayne would probably agree that if you stack them both up, like, you know, right now, McDavid by a landslide because of the speed alone, right? And speed. I mean, never mind the speed, like his ability to have his hands keep up with his speed is yeah. what separates him from like Formington's a fantastic skater, right? If, if Alex Formington could handle the puck like McDavid, he'd be making $14 million a year, but he doesn't. Yeah. And that's the difference, right? So to me, it's a no brainer. I would build my team around the best player of all time. And that is Connor McDavid. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And it's funny you bring that up. And like a guy I remember more from our era is like Jason Chimera. Like th this guy was an absolute Chimmer. I played with like, him. Yeah. He was so fast. Yeah. You know, and like, like road like, runner like, feet out there, <laughs> like, like David's ability to make these plays at high speed. Like, I just don't think anyone can come close to him. You know, no, maybe, like, maybe, maybe McKinnon and yeah, Boro. Like, I know, I know you're, you just played, so you're probably exhausted and not paying attention to a ton of the games right now. That's usually how I was after the yeah. playoffs, but, but like, there were a few, there were a few games here in that series where guys are literally taking runs at him. I remember Zadorov took a run at him. He, he knocked, he, scored, uh, yeah, he knocked yeah. him over. He knocked yeah, him over like, yeah. like Zadorov's like what, a, like 245 pounds or whatever huge, he is. Yeah. He's yeah. huge. And McDavid just shook him off. Like, so it's not like yeah. even the physicality he'll bring it. I, I, I mean, his ability to just like single-handedly take over a game, I think is 
yeah. is kind of second in the league. And then I think, you know, to your point about like trying to compare him to like players of another era, like, you know, I think the parody in today's game amongst players is much better. Like, oh the, my God, quote yeah. unquote, like worst players in the NHL now, not even close, significantly better than the worst players in the NHL back in that era. So yeah, I think his ability to be that much better than the rest of us speaks to how good he actually is. Like me and you, you know, we grew up stay at home style defenseman, but we could yeah. still skate, right? Like, yeah. especially when we were a little younger in our primes, like when, you know, you didn't have to warm up before going on the ice. Like <laughs> everyone, I guess my point is everybody can skate now. You know, you don't yeah. have those big plugs that are just sort of just taking sure. up space on the ice. So I, I agree the parody now, like it's just, it's not even, you can't compare. Yeah. Wally, just for you, because I'm curious, because yeah. you're yeah. like the next, you're like maybe a generation ahead of us, and like hockey wise, at least. Where would you I'm stand older, on yeah. that? I'm, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, so, what would your opinion on this be? So, and the only way I can relate that is my kid is now 15, and I, I know this yeah. seems weird, but watching him develop and seeing how the speed of the game goes and how he plays against older players, uh, watching guys like McDavid, I, he's just in a different world of how he does it at that speed. Lots of guys can, as you said, Formington can skate to be able to do it at that speed. Like it's like, he's just standing there blows my mind. Uh, it yeah, it yeah. truly does. And yeah, I, 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 do, I think he's probably the best player to ever play without question. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. So we're all in agreement. Yeah. So here's the Is one question a- I have though. You have Sidney Crosby or Connor McDavid. Who do you uh, take? Don't well, I mean, I don't like that question. Cause I have a, I'll let Boro go first. Uh, I, you know, I, different, different skill sets, I think. Um, right. So which one do you want to win a Stanley cup? Who's taking you? <laughs> that's a hard one, man. Uh, that's a tough one. You know, I, I, I think if you're asking me today, I've got to take Connor McDavid. Like, I just don't know if, I agree. if anyone's better oh. than him. I, no, I'm Sydney well, all day long. Does he not? Okay. But does he not set players up just as good as Sid does? Right. Like, like where, where, where would you take Sid over as far as both their games go in different aspects of their games? Where would you give the edge to Sid? Forget about the Stanley Cups. Defensive he's got, he's style? Had some... Maybe. Okay, so you think defensively you think he's better than McDavid? I think he's fair. a more 200-foot yeah, uh, player. Okay. I, I can agree and accept that. My my kind of counterpoint to that, and I correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know, do either of them kill penalties or McDavid? I don't no, I don't think I don't so. so. Like Sid, Sid, Sid never I don't killed think penalties Sid when we were Sid. playing. No. no. Yeah. I, oh. I, I feel like I may have seen Connor out there a few times killing penalties. I mean, yeah, I certainly wouldn't. I, do I want him eating slap shots? No, but I wouldn't hesitate yeah. to put him out there in a PK because he it, his, if he's pressing the puck up high and he, like he's gone, you know. Like, well, who made that comment? Um, the football player was it Derek Carr, the quarterback in um, in Oakland uh, or the race, not Oakland yes. for the Raiders? He made the comment about how the McDavid in the video game isn't as good as the Mc, like he can't play as well with McDavid on NHL 2022 yeah. Yeah. compared to the McDavid in games. Right. Like that's, point, yeah. that's literally how good he is right now. Like I, yeah. I feel like we can't emphasize it enough. Anyway, I, I think we can all agree. He's a very good hockey player. Okay. Yeah. We'll go from one star to the other in Nick Paul. I know that's a good segue. Uh, <laughs> how much do you want to see him perhaps win the Stanley cup? Mark Borbietsky. Yeah. To Matt's earlier point, like about not like, I certainly don't watch hockey religiously when I'm over, but I do follow yeah. guys who I'm friends with. Um, so I've been follow, I've been watching Same. Tampa's games following Tampa because I want to see him have success. Um, you know, like I, I just think the world of him as a person and as a player and, you know, I, I don't want to step too far out of line here, but I, I have a lot of sympathy for him because I, I saw him go through in Ottawa what a lot of us went through towards the end of our time here. Yeah. And there's nothing more than – then I that I want to see that then him be successful and kind of prove the doubters wrong and say, Hey, I'm more than a three C who kills penalties. You know, like we went in there to Tampa and played him and he was playing on a line with Cooch and point. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, Life's I good. Mean, I, I, I've always thought that skill was there. Like you see yeah. this guy shoot the puck in practices and games. I'm like, this guy has some raw talent that I think is, you know, being overlooked. And I, I certainly want him to have some success. So yeah. Well, I, mean, I, love I, I agree. Is he the so is he the one guy left? And I can't think of everybody that's left that you would want to see win the cup. What do you mean? Think, I'm trying to get former sense. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Ooh, I, yeah. I don't know, Matt. You might know better than me. I, I'm, uh, Mika uh, in New York. Mika, yeah. Like I always hear for, for Mika and the Rangers. I like that Gerard Gallant too. So you know, yeah. yeah. I, I've got no issues with that. Uh, I mean, Stoney's done. Pedro Pedro didn't make it. 
Yeah. Yeah. And this is different. This is different for borrow to answer too, because he's still a current player. Whereas I can kind of, I can kind of fanboy a little bit more on some of the other guys, you know, you, you bring up uh, stoner in Vegas. Was there anybody in the West who was disappointed in how the season went for the Vegas golden Knights? (laughs) i'll let matt answer that one well (laughs) that 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 organization is no i'll I'll go i'll go there that organization was cutthroat like when i still tell i tell the story all the time um was kelly mccrimmon called me right after they picked me up from dal from um in that expansion draft and there was no warmth right and i'm not i'm not being i'm not trying to be critical because i know it's a business and it's a business of winning so i answer the phone and there wasn't a lot of warmth there it was more just Hey, Mark, uh, you know, so we picked you up Uh, just when you get a chance, send us your 10 team, no trade. And I'm like, okay, (laughs) like, I guess I know where I stand now. So I had to prepare myself. Right. But my point is, I I think, and they get that reputation, right. Where it's like, there's not a lot of that personal touch that you get. Like when I went to Dallas, for example, Jim Nill, in my opinion, and I mean, again, it doesn't mean a whole lot because there's a lot of general managers, but probably one of the most respected GMs in the NHL. He grabbed Ellie and I, my wife, from the rink, the practice rink in the middle of summer and just drove us around the city showing us everything. Like, oh, this is where the Dallas Cowboys practice. And this is Jerry Jones' helicopter in the middle of the field. And this is this. And like, he, he went out of his way to take care of us. And his wife was very involved with the team. Becky, she was uh, always helping us out, offered help with the kids. She, they babysat one night, our son. So that's the difference. And, and when, you, when you do those things for players, the word gets around and then it's not that they're doing it for that or recognition. They're just genuinely good people. And I feel like that goes a long way with a lot of players. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll I'm, I'm again, as a current player, I'm not going to weigh in too much on Vegas. I'll, of course. I'll build off what Matt <laughs> said. I'm going to protect myself here. While you're trying to set it up. But, uh, I'll build off what Matt said. Like, you know, that's been the attraction for me with Nashville is the reputation yeah. the, the, the Poils have. And actually someone who had reached out to me was Dave Poulin from TSM. Um, mentioning how highly he thought of, of David. Awesome. And, yeah. um, awesome. I remember the first training camp meeting here two years ago, David got up there and the first thing he did, like one by one, he had everything written down, birth of any child with anyone on the team, uh, engagements, weddings. And he went out and congratulated every single person one by one. And he just knew all that information. And like, he's always known, you know, my kids' names, Tara's names. They bent over backwards yeah, for us. The that's family. a big one. That, that stuff goes a long way. Totally. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think just to finish that thought, like I just now that I've played long enough and I'm retired now, but like looking back in some of the GMs I've had versus some of the others talk about a wide margin, right. Of personalities. And, and the one thing I can say that always kind of brings me back to this thought is the ones that treated you very well on a personal level, you'll always remember and you'll always speak very highly of, and that's, that's the difference anyway. Yeah. I I think you and I met like you, hockey as part of life through the same lens and yeah like you know i'm very much the same way it's like yeah you know obviously we're both competitive guys and in the moment like you want to win more than anything but when you step back at the end of your career and like you get a little more more reflective and like introspective it's like yeah who are the people who have bent over backwards for me and done good things and those are the people i'm forever grateful for yeah yeah Yeah. well and i will say uh to david poyle and jim neil i've never heard a bad word said about either one of those two gentlemen. Like, exactly. They are exactly. very highly respected. And I, and we live in an, in an industry where you hear people talk all kinds of stuff. And yeah. those two, I've never heard one person say a bad thing about it. speaks volumes. Yep. Um, it does. Is that part? So you signed a one year deal. It wasn't that long ago, if I want to say, but maybe it is longer than I think it is uh, to stay in Nashville. It, is this where you want to now finish your career? I'm not saying it's next year. I'm just saying, is this Good where question. perhaps you want to end uh, uh, the NHL reign? Yeah, uh, certainly. Uh, you know, it's, I, it feels like home to me now. You know, that, that first year was a little bumpy, but like the way this organization's treated me and the kind of the, the role in the home I found for myself and the way I'm valued as a player, like I think Matt can speak to this a little bit too. Like you had a great fit in Ottawa playing with Eric because people respected what you did. Um, Sometimes for you know, sometimes sort of not so flashy defenseman, like it's tough to find an organization that, that values you. And um, I have a coaching staff here in an organization that values what I do. And I'm like, why, like, why would I want to search for anything else? You know, it doesn't make sense. Like the grass isn't always greener. And um, I just love the way they treat me and my family. And um, I think even more importantly, like the core group of guys in this room, like Roman, Matthias, uh, Phil Forsberg, Johansson, like, 
Matt just saying, like, we have a really good group of old guys who care about each other. Like, the team's not clicky at all. You know, everyone That's gets along huge. great. Yeah, like, it's just, I, I don't know. Like, there's nowhere else I really want to be, you know. That's good to hear. Well, Boro, where do you guys, where, how, like, what's your proximity to the arena? What's that like? Yeah, so I'm, like, uh, 15 minutes south. I mean, traffic in Nashville is, gets a little gnarly sometimes because, like, the city's exploded, right? And, like, infrastructure hasn't really kept up. So, um it depends on tra- like sometimes you know weekends downtown like it's not you know from visiting there like it'll take me 30 35 but typically it's about 15 minutes so so, t- so it, your longest your longest commute to the rink would be like 30 35 minutes on a game day if you had yeah to. yeah exactly uh, yeah. see that's not bad though like no, it could yeah. be so much worse yeah Gosh, okay California or toronto or something i remember ron hainsey told me he was like living over in etobicoke or something and it took him like an hour and a half to get oh to yeah the rink. well um, remember <laughs> You, I don't know if you were there yet. You may have been. What, like, were you, did you play with Gonch? Was Sergey Gonch at all? Like, uh, you around? I, I was up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. You recall that the at the, you're yeah. still young. Um. Yeah. Gonch. I know I've told the story before, but he lived in Rockcliffe. So for those oh. listening, obviously that, that aren't yeah. familiar with Ottawa, it's on the far side of the city, literally the opposite end from Canada where the arena is. And he would like borrow. He would show up some nights. And it was like six o'clock for a seven thirty <laughs> game, and and nobody like our coaches like at the time like what, it was, what do it you was say Paul. To Gonch, no, right? no one said anything to him. He just yeah. and 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 he, and Gonch would never acknowledge it. He would just walk <laughs> in like nothing, take his clothes off, throw on his gitch, and then go to the meeting. A little late sometimes, and it was like nothing happened. So yeah. I, I played with him for like a month, and I think I spoke like two words to him. <laughs> that man. That man will live till he's 120 years old because there's yeah. not a bone in his body that has stress on it. He's just hey, yeah. so relaxed. Like I'm like, I'm stressed now and I'm not even playing anymore. Yeah. God knows my wife is aware of that, but like guys like Gonch, I'm so envious of because they're just yeah. happy go lucky. Just go chill. Flow, huh? Yeah, exactly. Anyway. So, you know what? That's he's one guy story. that doesn't get talked about very often, but a weird signing to say that Sergey Gonchar played for the Ottawa Senators. I, I think most people admit that. So um, for you two, both as defensemen, what was it like to have him around? Who's this? I, well, well, he's, uh, did, is he not in the Hall of Fame? I think. Borrow didn't have remember. a lot of interactions with him. I don't, I doubt, but he was just an interesting guy. Like he would have like, he had, he's, I, th- I believe he had an absolute shack somewhere down in Florida. So when we would go yeah, play sure against the Panthers, did. yeah, he'd have like, yeah, like, a, he'd be yeah. like an <laughs> island or something, right? Yeah, I think he would take all like the staff over on his boat. Yes, and that was the funny thing. It wasn't even the players. He would take some of the staff, like the, yeah. the equipment guys and whatever, and they yeah. go over, you're right, on the boat. I've, I've got a few good gone stories, actually, just because yeah, the younger guy, like, I remember Matthew had that like set of stones and he'd always like stone his own steel and like yes. he'd just sitting there like it was bizarre like, fixing its edges all the time. He was like obsessive over it. And then I remember <laughs> one time in a game I called for a DD pass and he got so mad at me. Oh, he did. Call. I was like, so you can't talk out there because people will know what you're gonna do. So I was like, <laughs> I'm never speaking to this guy again. <laughs> oh, it's okay. See, I didn't know that. I I don't yeah. think I've ever heard him actually get mad at anybody, but yeah, I also I, never I, played with him. I was like, I'm so, done talking to this guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's wild. Oh, that's great. I love how we're talking about Sergey Gonchar. We went from Boro signing yeah. in Nashville to just yeah. Gonchar chatter. That's <laughs> like, because we're both getting old. Yeah, this is a different era now. Yeah, <laughs> totally. It was just a weird signing. When you mentioned his name, I completely forgot about him. Uh, Boro, you talked about the coaching staff in Nashville uh, liking your game. Have they asked you? to try and score a goal because you haven't scored one as a member of the uh, Nashville yeah. Predators. So overrated. Uh, I scored like seven <laughs> in Ottawa and that was just it for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'm just done. So, um, again, I mean, when you have Roman Yossi on the last I'm not really sure how much they need my offensive production. Um, <laughs> well, no, 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 but I'll interject yeah. to defend Boro. Like, like think, think about as a defenseman, how many touches you're going to get in the yeah. offensive zone on even I, strength if you're not on the power yeah. play. So if you're not I, getting I any power get, play time. And, and I'm not, I, I don't begrudge them. Like, I, No, I no, no, get, I know you don't. I don't start in the ozone, which I don't expect to. What am I going to do that Roman Yossi can't do after like drinking 20 beers? You know, like the guy's still better <laughs> off than I am. So um, like, I, I, again, I'm pretty content with my role. Um, yeah. I know what it is. Like, uh, and, you know, I think the other thing I've really enjoyed is like, we have a really good group of young players who are like good people too. And they're kind of finding their way in this game. And they've kind of asked me, you know, like to, to, to try to be a positive influence. And I actually have really relished that. Like, you know, we had Tanner, you know, up front, like this guy's just like prototypical power forward. Like to me, he's going to be a captain in the NHL one day. Agreed. Like, I just really liked, you know, maybe I'm flattering myself a little too much, but like, I liked maybe having a bit of an influence on him 
and his year and, and, and how he handles himself and um, something I really enjoyed. Yeah. What's he a borrow? Is he like, is he a pretty strong kid? Like is he, <laughs> Dude, is he... this guy's back is like, I yeah. tell the guy he's the size of an SUV. Like, he's just, <laughs> just like Saskatchewan, well, on like farm strength. Oh you know? God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so not only has he got that farm boy strength, but it's probably reinforced with some good lifting habits and stuff too. Yeah, which I mean, makes him a weapon. A specimen, like he must yeah. be. Yeah, but like he's that's so fair. funny because he's so like soft spoken and he wears like glasses away from the rinks, like you would never expect it. <laughs> then like he takes his shirt off and you're like, oh my god, this guy's huge. Just <laughs> jacked. Oh, he's yeah. yeah. Well, he doesn't like, he falls onto the radar here, Borrow, because we yeah. don't you don't really hear much about anybody from the central, let alone Tanner yeah, Chanel, yeah. right? But when, when I watched you guys play and you came in, I was well, I was seeing guys bounce off of him on the ice. I'm like, who is this guy? He, we do like you know, Danny Hino was so funny, he'd make like highlight reels of guys like blowing people up in team video and he called it like the human bench press and it was just tanner just like reverse hit like lawn like clingberg like flying yeah. through the air like yeah it was it was nuts yeah like he awesome. you know and like he he cooled off a little bit at the end of the year so i think he kind of fell out of the collar talk but like you know guys first year in the nhl he had a, a his first child I think it might have been like march or something like it was shortly after tara and i had Lee. like yeah you know, everything in this league comes at you quick you know it's oh. a very it's a hard league to learn in. It's very unforgiving. Like, so and I was really proud of his year and what he did. And I just think he has a really bright future. I yeah. honestly, I think the world would like, awesome. You mentioned, you mentioned the kids, like just, I just, I don't know why, but it just reminds me of Turi. Remember when Turi would come to the rink and yeah. it looked like he looked like a zombie. You know, he'd be, yeah. he'd be Tough. like taking a 25 minute shower after practice. I'm like, Turi, what's, <laughs> what's wrong with yeah. you, man? And he just kind of sighs. Yeah. You you know, know? I think for a lot of us, it's like, hard. like, where's that line between like, being a present dad and, and, and being fully committed to hockey. Like it's tough to tread, you know, like you yeah, feel no. guilty if you're not around your kids, but you feel guilty if you're not fully invested in, in your team. And I mean, it's, 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 it's a learning process, but that's the margin, right? So, yeah. you know, like you, you, if you're not fully committed, it'll absolutely affect your hockey. Then I was lucky because I didn't, well, lucky, I guess define lucky. I had my kids after my career, but yeah. I mean, being able to just focus on it is such a, um, I don't want to say it's a privilege because having kids is the best thing in the world, but I mean, it's such a, it's such a major distraction in many ways. And it also takes a lot out of you, right? Like, you know, yeah, I mean, especially those sure. early stages. And so yeah. when I see guys like yourself managing families and still playing, I mean, I such a great deal of respect. It's so much work. No, yeah. It's uh yeah, I always laugh at young guys like we get in because essentially we travel a lot, you know, and like uh, yeah. get in like three thirty and and they're like, complaining. You they're, yeah, they're like, you do I'm like, I'll be up at six <laughs> thirty. Yeah, and they're like, sleeping in until think, ten and still complaining at noon. For yeah, that like, meeting oh, I'm so tired. Having. I'm like, oh yeah, I just ran on three and then had a thirty minute power nap. So yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Was this year more difficult? I I don't know what your schedule was. I know Ottawa played fifty games in a hundred days basically, and so. Uh, I don't, I think you guys didn't have exactly that tight, but when it's that tight, I, how does Tara manage, uh, Tara manage to go through that? Yeah. I, I, you know, I have so much like respect and admiration for, for single parents. And, uh, that last month for us, I think we had multiple, I think it was like two, seven and 11s or something we had. Oh. Um, so like, it, it was just nuts for us. Like it was insane. And like, I felt like I was never home and, she had a newborn named Miles, who's two, two and a half now, and he was just on the move constantly. So uh, definitely tough, you know. Luckily, now that it's a little bit easier to move back and forth in the countries, our parents were able to come down and help out, which not, which I think, you know, helped Tara. But I think selfishly for me, it kind of put my mind that he's going on the road. No you know? kidding. So, yeah. So, uh, no, that was great. But, I mean, she is a rock star. And uh, it's one of those things where, you know, I, I won't lie, like, like call a spade a spade. I'm in the back half of my career. So, you know, I appreciate her gut appreciate her gutting it out for, for however much longer it may be. And then, you know, I plan to hopefully maybe step, 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 step aside a little bit and let her pursue her interests and ambitions and kind of return the favor. Yep. Uh, I have a, two couple of quick questions left and that's one. It, I'm probably lying and it's probably five, but um, is the Nazem Kadri stuff that's been going on on social media. Um, and I know you're very outspoken on a lot of topics, yeah. including this one, like this is a pretty big one where I don't know that people understand like you should not have to suffer death threats to play a sport. No. It's just a sport. Like, and it has I think, no I think people understand. 
people understand now though, Wally, because they were exposed, right? Like when his yeah. wife, was it his wife or his girlfriend? And forgive me, because I don't know if he's yeah. married, but but his yeah. his partner posted all that stuff online, which to me was the best thing you could do, right? Yeah. Like just I think we're at a point now where you like, you know, people used to post stuff and they would scribble out the name so that you wouldn't expose yeah. the individual. I think at this point, it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna send something like that to somebody, you have to be able to stand behind those words. And, yeah. and, and I love that she posted that shit. Cause look at the attention it's garnered and it's, it's a wake up call for a lot of people. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'll be honest. Like I was pissed off by the whole thing. I mean, hundred percent. Like, it, like it's a game. Like let's, let's settle down. Yeah. You know, it's a bunch of guys out there slapping a piece of rubber around. Like, yep. you know, I, I don't know. I don't even know how to articulate my thoughts properly. You can't. It's kind of like a vis. Yeah. It's, it's my, like it's, it's hard to understand right? it. Like what, yeah. what, what, what makes somebody go there? Right. Like yeah, go to your way like, to type that. It makes me angry. And then I'm like, you know, is anger really the right response to this? I, I don't know. And it just like, like, like you said, like just, it is bullshit. And I, I I'm so sorry that he has to deal with that. And it's just so stupid. Yeah. yeah. Well said. And that's, is this, that's, Go, well, I was just going to mention the, the one thing now, and I think that's what's kind of made it worse, is the availability to connect to everybody, right? So yeah. now that everyone's got social media, particularly athletes, right? It's a platform. You want to use it to better everything, right? You, The community, yourself, your brand, you name it. It's, it's got a lot of different usage. But now every freaking dummy out there that's probably not been raised properly, you'll never get through to them. They have a voice and they're able to reach out to anybody they want and shit talk them. Like I had, yeah. I posted stuff on mine when I was jokingly making fun of the Leafs weeks ago. And I posted a couple comments that were in my inbox on Instagram. And some guys were talking to me saying that they were going to come to my house when right. I left and blah, blah, blah with my wife and yada, yada, like yeah. really bad stuff that you potentially yeah. probably could call the police over, but I didn't, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's like, you know, obviously that's not racism, so I'm not trying to compare myself, but I'm no, just yeah. explaining the, the access that these people have now. And it's like, fuck, it's dangerous, man. Yeah. And so that's yeah. my point yeah. as, as a pro athlete, is this going to start to reflect the engagement that you guys now have with fans? Are we going to uh, see a pullback from professional athletes in general over all this stuff? No. I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't fault anyone for moving that direction an athlete like is that really worth no. I, I, I don't know like the anxiety and headache and oh, and crappy emotions crazy. that it brings like no it isn't like um you know like again like i'm by no means am i trying to equate this to what nazim's going through but like well i, I had a knee major on uh, dimitri yaskin earlier in the year and ended his year and like i, I had check, that i had like check hockey fans messaging me and it's gonna be like i hope your kids get tortured like yeah man like just like like, like oh, yeah. really aggressive like dark stuff yeah. and it's like I, I don't know, like, and I took a bit of a breather off social media at the end of the year. And like, I was like, man, this was nice, you know, like, so mm. I, I'm, I'm certainly not going to fault anyone for, for wanting yeah. to pull back. Because, and it's, and it's, yeah. it's challenging though, because a lot of people use that as a means of extra income or whatever. Like you get a yeah. lot of opportunity. Maybe I shouldn't word it like income, but there are a lot of op opportunities yeah. for people yeah. through social media. So you have to kind of navigate through that and figure out what you value more. Right. So yeah. it's a, yeah. and now the kids that are coming up are completely yeah, immersed like, in it. Right. Yeah, They're I attached. Think it's an extension. Like, social media and the internet, not to get too like abstract on you guys, but social media and the internet just brings up the worst in people sometimes. hundred like, percent. Uh, yeah. It's just really unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, do you have to go or do you have one more question left? No, no, a little man just waking up, but I got a monitor here. So. Okay. Uh, um, one of the things you said going into the Ottawa game was you'd wish, I, I may be paraphrasing this wrong, that you would appreciate it more the, or living in the moment at the time when you played in Ottawa. Yeah. Uh, do you want to take us back, just, I, I guess, what it was like for you to play for the Ottawa Senators now that you look back? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I stand by that. Like, uh, I think coming into the league, I was very timid. Um, you know, I got into just with Alfie and Spets and Neeler and Philly and these guys. And I was like, I don't belong here. Like, Imposter syndrome. I had oh, that yeah. too. I was just like, wow, Same I mean, thing. speak at a turn. Like, Hey, I, I know you've been to like, we all go through that. And I think that's something I try to do as an older guy now and helping young guys transition into the league. It's like, yeah. just be yourself be comfortable in your own skin. Cause if you're comfortable in the room, you're going to be comfortable on the ice. Like, so, you know, I think that really sort of made that first stretch turn into a bit of a blur for me. Um, and then I just think I, I you know, I kind of took for granted, like, you know, we, we talked about this, this, this league is so hard to survive. And like, you feel like you're treading water sometimes. So you're not really able to appreciate what you have. And 
Yeah. And I was, you know, playing in front of my family and friends every night, playing for my hometown team that I was always a fan of just because I was trying to survive in the league, you know? So I wish, you know, I had kind of the maturity and, and, and experience, you know, now, uh, yeah. if yeah. I could kind of go back in time and use that, uh, to kind of enjoy my time. But maybe, and maybe, but maybe being that hyper focused and uptight is what allowed you to stay in the league for as long yeah. as you have, right? Sure. So there's always yeah. there's always two sides. Like I always say the same thing, Burrow, because I'm in many ways like you. Like, like when it came to my approach, like it, everything stressed me out about the game, right? Like I was always nervous. I, I, I think always, that's why we connected a lot, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 the challenge. And I like, think I we, remember sitting with you in the lounge a few times, and like I think we were both in the same headspace, right? Like, yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. it's a good point you make. Like you know, I've been open about. Uh, having OCD and I think OCD is like a double-edged sword. Like it, it, it retracts for me at, at its worst times, but it's also kind of made me successful because the strength I have set too. over nutrition, training, my preparation, you Bingo. know, so Bingo. Bingo. Yeah, it's one of those fine lines. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that was just, you know, speaking kind of from an emotional and sentimental place. I was like, man, I wish I'd been able to kind of like be a little more present mentally and, and realize how good I had in my time there versus just trying to survive in the league. Yeah. That's what well uh, that's fair. I, I just, I picked up on that note and I, and I appreciate you just being open about that stuff. Cause I think a lot of people, and especially in professional athletes don't enjoy the moment because they're so busy just trying to, I guess, stay in yeah. it, if you will, or tr- survive. Right. So yeah. Uh, and much like, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll add one more thing to that. Sorry, just not to get too long winded, but like I credit, you know, I, I'm in a place now where I think I can enjoy things and I credit my teammates for that. Like, yeah, we've got a group of guys here who are not uncomfortable speaking about those difficult situations. Like we all go through them as athletes, Matt, and, I don't know about you, but for me, it was like, oh, if I acknowledge this publicly, like it's like I'm admitting weakness or like I'm letting weakness in. And I think we have yeah. a group of guys who are like, hey, you know, like it's cool to talk to your teammates about this. Like we're brothers, like it's but let's lean on each other. Like Ryan Johansson and Phil Forsberg and Roman Yossi, like these guys like bend over backwards for me. Like the text they send me, the way they talk to me, like Joey, like the way this guy talked to me after the game went <laughs> in, uh, in Ottawa, like I, I was yeah. crying. You yeah. know, like he like gave me a hug and I was like, this guy's like family, you know? So yeah. Um, I credit like having teammates like that and helping you be able to kind of get that. That's, team. that's cool. Like, that yeah. It's cool that you say that about Joey. Cause I had him in Columbus yeah, and I yeah. drafted him and he was so young and quiet and way, awkward. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> like, who is this kid? You know what I mean? And, and, but he's, he's obviously grown a lot. He was always a great kid, but I mean, I'm calling him a kid. He's yeah. obviously grown into a good veteran and, and a good leader. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's the, my biggest takeaway, Boro, and you can probably speak to this too, is can we like, can we acknowledge the difference between the veterans that we had for the most part when we first came into the NHL to how yeah. much the culture has changed? Like, like when I people when I hear people talk about the hockey culture, I kind of wince a little bit because I don't think they truly understand the progress that has been made. Obviously, there's always room for yeah. to, to be better and better people, but like the the veterans that you have in the league now compared to when I came in, my word, like what yeah. a change and 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 for the better. You know what I mean? Like. The stories that you're yeah. saying right now resonate with me because when I came into the NHL, I like there were guys that had no time for me at all. Yeah. And I was a quiet guy. I wasn't even an outspoken player. And now, like to your point, with the, the way they're kind of welcoming you in and help you out, and you're not even a young guy, you're a veteran and they're doing it. So yeah. I like to hear that. Anyway. Yeah, no, it, it, you, you said it. Like, certainly, like I, I was fortunate. Like, the generation I came in was not even that bad. Like, I had good vets. I had you, I had Nikki Felino, like, you know, these like good people who helped me along yeah, the way. Fair enough. Like, fair enough. Certainly, you know, it's changed even more. And like, I, I still saw a bit of it, you know, just things like being scared to go on the training table, stuff like that, you know, yeah. guys looking around <laughs> with like, like, like you feel like your legs hanging on by a thread and you're like, oh, I'm a rookie. I can't get to That's it. Like, like yeah, genuine, genuine injuries. And I'd be in the yeah. room in, like in Columbus and like, I won't name names because I'm not throwing anybody yeah. under the bus, but a couple of vets would like walk by and there was plenty of comments and they were legitimate. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm not going on this table. Yeah, like like a torn... shoulder or something. Yeah. Or like, or like a, like a pulled, like, like hamstring or like yeah. a bad hip flexor. No, nope, I'll just go treat myself in the back. Maybe I'll yeah. sit in the hot tub. Like you know? I'm so. very thankful that's changed. Like young, like that shouldn't yeah. be an issue. You know, we all no. to the team. Like, like we got, you know, playing in our top four, Alex Carey is a rookie and he's playing yeah. 25 minutes tonight. If that guy needs treatment, I want him on the table. I yes, need to, you know, exactly. Like, so. Imagine that yeah. common sense. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm going to go in the cold tub right now. Um, so, uh, Boro, we appreciate your time as always. It's good to catch up with you. Uh, we look forward to doing it again down the road, if you don't mind. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Uh, me back in Ottawa this summer. So I'll uh, have to drag Matt out for a game of golf at some point. Uh, Sounds good. Assuming, assuming we can find childcare services. We'll, uh, <laughs> it's we'll called daycare. 
you know, for anyone, <laughs> I'm, I'm a pretty approachable guy floating around. So you see me in pharma with no teeth on, just or no teeth in, just come say hi. So fair enough. Uh, I appreciate that. I love talking to you guys. You know, uh, it's fun. So thank you for having me on. Thanks, All right. Carl. Well, thanks for not inviting me to the golf game. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I caught that too. <laughs> oh, see, yeah, yeah. see you guys. That's great. Okay. Should I just should I just exit now? Just end call. Uh, yeah, this conversation's over. <laughs>
three days and I was like, I just accepted it. Yeah. And so it, if anything, that makes it better now, like the elation of the power coming back on everything beeping was, was excellent. So yeah, that, good um, for you. That, I hope everybody else gets their power back. Yeah. I, the only thing I'll th- through that whole thing, I wish they could have done is, and everybody's the same is tell us when, like, if you told me yeah. you don't get power till Friday, you just accept it. Right. But yeah, you just the want, unknown you just want to know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can't really yeah. prepare. We're trying to buy bags of ice just to try and keep some stuff cool. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I know lots of yeah. people have it worse. And I don't even know if Ian Mendez now still has power yet. And he's in uh, a different. And are all the but... are all the schools are all nope. the schools running again? No, nope. some Our... of them are. Like, See, no. It's crazy. Eh? And that's the, the sign of the times, because when I was in grade, I was in grade eight during the ice storm mm-hmm. um, in 99, 98. I forget. 98. Yeah, 98. 98. Yeah. And um, I still remember getting back after like a week and a half of being home and our, my, my eighth grade teacher at my very strict French Catholic school was shaming the guys and, and girls that weren't going to class during the storm. <laughs> and now you can't get your kids in school. No, yeah. It's like, we're like, we've done a 180. It's crazy. Oh, I yeah. still remember. I won't name the teacher. I'm not a huge fan of his, but um, yeah, like it, like this is the kind of teacher that would give you a red X on uh, publicly in front of everyone in the class when you didn't do well on a, on a test. Right. You know what I mean? Like just the shame and it continued on. Anyway, if I could see him now, I'd probably have some words for him, but oh, hopefully he doesn't have on. power. Yeah. Hopefully he doesn't have power right now. How about hopefully that? he doesn't Ooh. have power. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, I asked the, I asked the kids thing because yeah, my kids finally went back to daycare today, but I mean, for a lot of people, I think school's still out, eh? So. Yeah. My, well, my wife, te- she's a teacher. Uh, and like, she had to go. Like, she, we haven't had, we didn't have power until today. Like, she had to go. Oh, yeah. You, there's no today, reason to go so. to, you, you can't expect the kids to go to school. I'm, I'm with you on <laughs> yeah, that. I'm no, just I agree. Saying, it's, it's just, just such a contrast from the last big disaster we had, right? Yeah. It's, well, we made that decision. We're like, well, we don't want to send our kids if there's other people, like teachers that don't have power. But meanwhile, like, she'll begrudgingly go do it. So it's like, I don't know. I think it's one of those things where if you can keep them home, maybe do. If you, if yeah. you want to send, like, I don't know. Something like the, my, my kids' middle school is open today, but buses aren't running. So it's like, if you can figure out your own way there, I guess. Well, you'd rather burn the rather burn the bus gas than yeah, your own, they, right? Yeah, That's exactly. another little thing. I know. So crazy. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, that was a lot of right, storm talk there. Yeah. I'm, uh, oh, so I'm glad, on that note, yeah. I'm glad everybody is safe and sound. Uh, as we like to say, yeah. all the more power to you. Um, oh. That's uh, that's our oh, show. Come on, man. <laughs> we'll see you yeah. next time. Uh, have a great show, everybody.